Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about all the bags that I actually previously owned and I would never ever ever buy them again. They obviously didn't work out for me. Um, yeah, didn't work out for me. So I would never repurchase these bags. So if you do like luxury videos, um, all about handbags, fashion, all that sort of stuff and shopping purchases that you made that were a mistake clearly with these handbags um, and then please hit the subscribe button down below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos which is every Wednesday and weekend US time so jumping right into this video yeah I have some ones that I think to this very day about um, the mistake I made with that bag and why did I even buy it in the first place okay some of them you know it's more a case of okay yeah bought it it was alright didn't really work out for me and I definitely wouldn't buy it again because of the experience and you know what there is actually a flip side to this there is I'm actually probably gonna film this video as well is that there is actually bags that I have bought sold and would actually repurchase I wouldn't say that they're necessarily like regrets of selling it's more like um, at the time it wasn't the kind of right bag for you but now your lifestyle's changed you're like hang on that bag would actually be really good so there is actually a flip side to this so I will definitely film a video like that so this is kind of like a bit of a review as well so if you're thinking about buying any of these bags you might find um, my experience with them helpful I hope so that way you can avoid bad purchasing mistakes uh, all right let's start off with Celine so I once owned the Celine trapeze bag and this was actually around about the time that I was starting to sort of branch out outside of Louis Vuitton this probably is going to be a pretty self-explanatory most people when it comes to Celine, to the Celine trapeze it's the closure the closure is so annoying on that bag it was a really good size so I definitely loved that about it um, so it fit quite a lot and at the time I was still really much so into big handbags I felt that I need to carry everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, I was also actually pregnant with my daughter at the time as well when I bought this bag. But yeah, that closure was so annoying. And then the bag would kind of flop open. So if you had your bag full and you opened up the bag, it kind of just all your stuff would pretty much fall out of the bag. And then you had to use your knee to hoist it up just to close it. So that was a really annoying handbag. And I definitely will not purchase that anymore. And I'm pretty sure it's obviously discontinued by Celine anyway, because they have a new designer. The next bag is actually a Celine luggage tote. And I bought this in a tricolor, pretty sure it was like a three color sort of luggage tote. And it was the handheld version only. It was the size underneath the Phantom. So the Phantom is the one that really opened up into a huge massive bag but this was the size that was just under so I can't remember what that size would have been maybe the medium or something like that for what it is like being a, a handheld tote bag it was okay like it done the job but um, it just didn't have really much of an appeal I kind of used it for a bit and I was just like this isn't doing anything for me and it was again the same reason I wanted to branch out of just buying Louis Vuitton and go into other luxury houses and that bag just didn't do it for me. It was a nice color combo though, so it was nice that it was at least a unique style. But yeah, ended up obviously selling that and I definitely would not repurchase that. And again, it's obviously probably being discontinued anyway. The next one is um, a Prada bag. And this is again going to be the same reason I wanted to branch out into other brands. And it was the Galera tote. I think it was the Galera tote because I know that Prada has another bag that's quite similar to this and I think it has a different name. Um, or it might have been that I can't really remember but yeah this color I really liked for the handbag but the actual handbag itself for Prada it was just a case of it just wasn't doing it for me also I also found that it was easy to get corner wear as well um, so yeah definitely would not buy that bag again the Safiano leather also doesn't really appeal to me too it feels very firm it just doesn't feel like a luxurious leather handbag but it is quite hard wearing um, a lot of people love Prada for work bags so I can at least give it that credit the next bag that I would not buy again is the Givenchy Pandora now I actually owned this I think it was in the small size I'm pretty sure it was in the small size um, you know for an actual casual bag it is actually good for that like it's uh, easy to carry very very lightweight very smooshy so it's definitely got total casual vibes very comfortable but it was again a matter of it just didn't vibe with me so I was just looking at my son it was like you know when they're sleeping and they make noises like they're having a dream yeah <laughs> but I also think he's about to wake up too. Okay, so yeah, the Givenchy brand just doesn't vibe with me at all. So I think that's why I would just I ended up selling it because it didn't vibe with me. I thought it was really nice though in weight wise. 
and it was definitely a very comfortable casual bag it was really just the brand thing that just didn't vibe with me at all that's been the only Givenchy bag I've ever bought and I've never bought any any other Givenchy bag ever again and I probably won't ever now the next one is a Fendi bag and it's actually the monster roll tote so I bought this bag because I needed a tote bag I bought it at the time I was pregnant with my daughter and I figured I need a tote bag you know about to be a mom but I don't know why I bought it when that face was just like, I don't know, it just felt like it didn't go with any of my outfits. Plus it was a blue, like a royal blue tote bag. Um, and this really should, if I had thought about buying my Constance 18 in blue electric, I probably should have thought back to the fact that that uh, Fendi Monster Roll tote didn't work out for me. For the very reason that it was like a royal blue handbag. Oh well. Um, but yeah, didn't like it for the reason of the colour, didn't vibe with me, didn't work out for me. I felt that it didn't go with my outfits. The face on the bag also, you know, um, also didn't like the leather too. It felt a bit like Safiano leather. So that's another bag I definitely would not repurchase. And again, I think they've discontinued it anyway. Now, my top deal, my, this is the bag that I think, I mean, what was I thinking? This is obviously um, kind of an impulse purchase, I feel like, which is so bad. You should never impulse buy on luxury. And it's a Dior book tote. So the Dior book tote, I did a review on my channel about the bag. And you know what? It's actually a really good handbag if you've got the lifestyle that, that suits for it. So traveling, if you travel a lot, um, if you uh, need to carry a lot of things for work, like a laptop, notebooks, books, like study equipment, whatever. You know, if you're studying, you need a massive bag. It's really good for that. But for my lifestyle, it was a silly purchase. And this was something that I, I, I was, I liked the bag. I seen it on social media. I was probably, you know, persuaded by social media. And then my sales associate said that she had one available and I decided to just buy it, you know, and I really didn't put enough thought into it. It was pretty much like a day decision. It was like, I thought about it. I, I would, was watching it on social media. I liked it, but I never did any research on it. Never really gave it good thought, looked at the measurements, compared it to my size. You know, I never did any of that. I just kind of went on a whim and bought it when it was available because it was very, very hard to get at the time that this bag came out. Yeah, this was a bad decision. This is an example of why you really should do your research when it comes to buying luxury handbags. Don't just jump into your purchases, do as much research as possible, sleep on it, you know, uh, watch as many YouTube videos as you can. At the time there was hardly, there was pretty much nothing on the Dior book tote though, unfortunately. But look at the measurements, compare them to bags that you have, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so in this case, I stuffed up. I didn't do the right thing, I didn't follow my checklist, and that Dior book tote didn't work out for me because it was just way too big. It was way too big, I didn't have the lifestyle for it. Even though I, I like a big tote bag can be obviously advantageous when you've got a child. Um, at the time I only had my daughter, you know, and it's good for carrying a lot of things, but um, the proportion of that bag being so huge, it was unnecessarily huge, it was just that too big. Uh, and it was also too big for my body as well. And then when I wanted to, when I would use the bag and go shopping, it would just kind of whack into people. It was like a big, massive box on your shoulder. So just totally an uncomfortable bag. Um, the handles were uncomfortable. They weren't nice to sit on your shoulder. It was only good to be handheld, but then it was just way too big. It was so big that you would fill it up unnecessarily. Also, it's um, like a textile fabric canvas. So over time, it would have had wear on, would have developed wear on the corners. I'm 100% sure it would have. So, and you pretty much can't really repair a bag like that. It's not like leather. You can't just fill it in with edge glazing or color, you know, color top it or anything like that. So there are just so many things that I really should have thought about before going into that purchase. And that bag obviously didn't work out for me. Never going to buy another dual book tote again. I'm actually never going to buy a dual book tote in any of the sizes. Like they've come out with smaller sizes that are far more practical and reasonable and would work for me. But I just am not going to buy that bag ever again. Um, another Dior handbag that I once owned and will never buy again uh, is the Dior saddle bag in oblique and the vintage version in the Trotter or whatever you call it. So I own both of them. I own them. I own the vintage one first and the Trotter pattern or whatever you say. And then I decided to buy the um, the new version of the Dior saddle bag in the oblique in the standard size, not the mini size, the standard size. And I would never buy either of those bags again. I would buy a Dior saddle bag in leather though. And in this case, is actually a matter of the logos. I just don't like those logos on the Dior bag, uh, on the Dior saddle bag. I find it to be too much because the kidney bean shape, uh, it's got the D hanging down, it's got the CD logo on either side, like the hardware. 
and then you've got the um, you know the logo mania all over it I just find it to be too much it's not my style anymore so um, at the time when I had the bag it was kind of fun but it was pretty much short-lived I found that that pattern really clashed with a lot of my outfits like especially in summer I find that that's more of a summer bag I would wear it with a dress but my dress would have floral print on it or I'd have some kind of pattern and I felt that the oblique really clashed with it um, I'm pretty positive that I will never buy the Dior saddle bag in the oblique or in the vintage Troder never again but I could potentially buy it in the leather version it could very well happen I'm not sure it's come on it's been on my wish list it's come off my wish list right now it's off my wish list so who knows? Now let's move on to Louis Vuitton. So there have been some Louis Vuitton bags that I bought before and I definitely will not buy ever again. And the first one is the Damier Abin Speedy 25 in the Bandelier. So this is actually the Damier Abin print that I'm not into anymore. I don't... It To me, when I look look at Louis Vuitton and think of Louis Vuitton, I think of the monogram. So I just much prefer the monogram. So it's actually not the Speedy 25 Bandelier that I wouldn't buy again. It's just the Damier Abin. So I used to own that in the Damier Abin. I think it was right about the time they gave birth to my daughter. And it was a practical bag, no doubt about it. But just the actual Damier Abin print doesn't vibe with me. It doesn't it doesn't make me think of it when I think of Louis Vuitton. I just think of monogram. So I pretty much only like the monogram bags from Louis Vuitton. Another Louis Vuitton bag is the Alma BB. And this is actually going to be in any version. So it doesn't matter if it's in monogram. I just don't like the Alma BB because mainly that strap. It is way too long for me. When I own this bag in the monogram, that the bag would sort of sit pretty much at like my thigh. It was just way too long. So I don't know why they don't just have an adjustable strap for it. Even the new um, leather empreinte version of the Alma BB doesn't have an adjustable strap either. So why not just do an adjustable strap? It would just be so much easier for people that aren't tall. So yeah, I would never buy that bag again. Even though it looks pretty, that no doubt about it. It's a nice shape as well. Like I think it's a very nice shape bag. It's also very fair price for Louis Vuitton too. But that strap just annoys me. And I don't see why I should have to go and buy a different strap just so I could have an adjustable strap. It should work with the strap that it comes with. I shouldn't have to modify the bag. The next Louis Vuitton bag that I once owned and will not buy again is the Palm Springs Mini. So I actually owned this in the Infra Infrarouge. Yeah, Infrarouge. So that's that red and black version. It was a limited edition one. And um, that was very short lived in my collection. It was the red and black print was just too much. I bought it because I was like, oh yeah, I want a limited edition print. The Palm Springs mini backpack was super hot item at the time. Everyone wanted it, but I was like, I'm going to get it in a limited edition print. So it's unique to everyone else. But that red and black was just totally not me. It felt like gothic vampire vibes, that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I don't even like the bag itself anyway. I wouldn't even add that back in the monogram. I wouldn't even add it back in the reverse. Just the bag for the price of it. And also what it is, it's a mini backpack, but you use it as a crossbody bag. It confuses me. Actually, all these bags, um, yeah, all of them, I made my money back on them. So they didn't work out, but I didn't lose really, like I didn't lose anything except maybe the Dior book tote. I've lost um, 500 Australian dollars on that one because I bought it after the price increase, unfortunately. But everything else, I actually made my money back on it. So that's okay. At least, you know... It, it wasn't so harsh where they didn't work out for me and then I lost money, but all of these I broke even anyway, so that's good. Um, the next Louis Vuitton bag is the Neverfull. So I did once own the Neverfull in the GM size a very, very, very long time ago. I would have owned this, I think, when I was 22 years old, maybe, 22, so 10 years ago. Um, yeah, it was a GM and it was just way too big. It was massive. It was huge. It fit so much, but it was around the time when I was 22 years old, 10 years ago, big bags were in. Everyone had big bags. So the GM was the bag to get for the Neverfull. Not the MM or not even the PM. No one had the PM. It was always pretty much the GM. Um, and Jerusha Couture could probably relate to this because she probably bought the Neverfull back then as well. And big bags were in. Uh, but yeah, I would never buy Neverfull again in any of the sizes. I just don't like the Neverfull anymore. It is too overdone. You see it everywhere. Everyone, you know, everyone and their mum has it. Um, just, yeah, it, it's all over the place. And even fakes as well. You see so many fakes of them. So it just puts me off the bag, unfortunately, when I see something that's um, too overly saturated. And it's a shame that, you know, some of the oversaturation may actually be just a bunch of fakes as well. That's annoying too. 
but yeah it is what it is look it's a really practical tote bag so i can give it that i can give that credit um but it's just not for me so i definitely would never buy a never full bag again and then the last louis vuitton bag that i have on my list and this might come as a surprise because i think everyone well almost everyone loves this bag and it's the pochette matisse so I have realized that the Pocha Matisse is not for me. I actually bought this bag. I bought it in the monogram back in um, 2016 when I, before I even um, was pregnant with my daughter, I managed to score it at the retail price back then. It was actually quite easy to get back then. It only sort of just come out. It wasn't really raging with popularity. Um, and then, I don't know, I just kind of was like, meh, it's all right. Yeah, it's kind of cool, but I just got over it. Um, and I decided to sell it actually to fund my uh, Hermes Kelly 32 in Ardennes. It was going to be my first um, Hermes purchase. So I, I knew I wasn't really that in love with the Pochette Matisse anyway. I was like, yeah, it's practical. It's cool. You know, it's nice. It's Louis Vuitton, you know, but I really want an Hermes bag. So I was happy to let that go. And then I kind of missed it. I thought, oh, that was actually quite a practical bag. Um, you know, I want to add that back. So then I decided to buy it in um, the reverse. And it ended up getting my personal shopper in Italy, um, uh, Lena. I'll put her details down below. She sourced that for me and I ended up buying that for, um, I think it worked out to be the same as the retail price in Australia anyway, because Europe is much less. And I got that in the reverse enjoyed using it for a while and um, again it was another case of I wanted to fund another Hermes bag and that bag was expendable. The Pochette Matisse was expendable because even though I kind of liked it, I wasn't in love with it, it was more of a practical thing, it was just a practical handbag for a mum with a kid um, but it also held its value quite easily so I knew I was not going to lose any money on it so it was an easy handbag to sell so I sold it again and then I decided to buy it back um, in uh, Monogram um, and like this is like a while later, I bought it back again in Monogram, I bought it pre-loved for a really good deal and then I kind of got it and was like, meh, Monogram, I'm not really that into it, I think I prefer it in reverse. So I sold that again, so that was my third Pochette Matisse. Got my, actually made a slight profit on it because I got it for a really good deal pre-loved from Japan. Um, and then I started stalking the online Louis Vuitton store for the reverse because I knew that I really liked the reverse the most out of, out of the two. And then I bought it again in the reverse. But this time around, you've probably seen this on my YouTube channel already. Um, the reverse Pochette Matisse had a fault with it. It had a bump in the lab, in the canvas and I couldn't get it out. It was a really hard bump and it was looked terrible. It was right on the front of the bag. So I ended up sending that back and getting a refund. And then when the next um, reverse Pochette Matisse became available, I bought that. But by that point, I'm up to, I'm up to five Pochette Matisses by then and I was just over it. I was just done, I was over it. I kind of, I used the bag I think for a couple of days and I was just like, you know what, I'm done. This bag is not for me, I give up. Um, it's lost its appeal, you know, it kind of is a practical bag, but it's not making my heart sing. I don't want anything in my collection that doesn't make my heart sing, unless it's an absolute super duper bargain price and it's a practical bag. But for the Porsche Matisse, it is not a bargain price. You know, it's in the $2,000 price range. So, you know what, I've given up on the Pochette Matisse. I know everyone loves it, you know, a lot of people have it, you see it on social media, it's pretty much everyone's go-to casual crossbody bag, especially if you're a mum with kids, uh, and people, you know, sing their praises about the Pochette Matisse, but for me, I have given up with it. Not buying it again, never gonna buy it again, I'm done, it's not a bag for me. Now, moving on to Chanel. So, I actually only have one Chanel bag in this list that I would never ever buy again, and it's the Gabriel Backpack. So, I owned this in the white and black combo. It was pretty much, it had just come out. It was just, it was a Gabriel Backpack. It came out just after the standard Gabriel bag, and I wanted a backpack because I was a mum, uh, a new mum at the time, and I was like, you know what, I need a backpack. But that backpack is not a practical one at that. It has this chain that kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. And you have to like line it up to get it even on your back. And if you don't, it ends up being that the backpack is like sitting on the wrong side of your back, like crooked. There's just so many things wrong with that backpack. Also, it was quite expensive for a backpack too. But ultimately, that chain was the, the major deal breaker for me. It was just so annoying having to adjust the bag into the center to put the chains on like a backpack. Um, and then we're almost at the end. So I have also here the Gucci belt bag. So I did own the Gucci belt bag before. I bought it at the time that belt bags were really like, you know, in fashion. You know, they kind of dwindled out now, but this had only sort of just released. Gucci, I think, was pretty much the first fashion house to launch the belt bag. And I bought the Gucci one. 
And you know, it's kind of cool with styling. I'll give it that. And I used it when I went to Queensland and we went to theme parks. So I actually ended up using that Gucci belt bag. Um, and it meant that I was totally and completely hands-free. So that was very, very convenient. But I would never repurchase it again because it was such a small bag. It was also too trendy for me. But you know what, like I said, I didn't lose money on it because it was still quite popular at the time that I decided to sell it. Anyway, I ended up making a very small profit because it had gone up in price from that point anyway, I think a couple times. Now we're up to the very, very, very last item on my list. And this one comes with a bit of an exception. I wanted to make sure I put in an Hermes item and it's the Hermes Mini Evelyn. Now I've actually gone through two Mini Evelyns, actually three, gone through three Mini Evelyns. I had a blue Payon, Payon or whatever you say it. Um, I had a Mini Evelyn in Itan and I had a mini Evelyn in Blue Onk. Now, the Blue Pay On one I sold uh, because I think it was just like, you know what, I'm not really into this color with that blue kind of uh, teal strap going across me. It was quite thick. I'm not vibing with it. But at the time, I didn't really realize the bag was too long for me. I didn't notice it, okay? The Atan one, when I bought that, I was like, hang on, this bag kind of sits like at my thigh. It's really quite long. So I sold it because of that. And then when the blue onk one came up, it was with the sangle strap and it was in the unique one. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy this because I really wanna use that sangle strap and maybe I can make this bag work again because that strap is super awesome. But again, it was the same problem. The bag is just way too long for me with that strap. It's at 113 centimeters and that's too long for my height with crossbody. But the only exception I have to that is if they come out with the Mini Evelyn with an adjustable strap, then I definitely would buy it because it's actually a really practical handbag and it is a very affordable price point for an Hermes bag. It's a great entry level bag. It is cute. It's a mini bag, uh, comfortable, lightweight, uh, crossbody, you know, it ticks a lot of boxes. So if they came out with an adjustable strap, I would repurchase that handbag. Um, also, the only other way I potentially could repurchase it is if I ended up getting the Sangle strap because Hermes sell the Sangle strap separately and I have been thinking about getting it for my Kelly but I have decided not to get it until I end up with another Kelly bag. So we will see, there's a possibility that I could buy Mini Evelyn if either of those things happen, that they come out with the adjustable strap or I end up getting a Sangle strap separately. Okay, so that wraps it up for all the bags that I owned before. Realized didn't work out for me and I would never ever buy them again But when I look back at this list, even though it kind of seems like wow, she is so impulsive How did she make so many bad bag decisions? A lot of these bags were actually bought um, because I wanted to branch out into other luxury brands I wanted to find out what was the brand that was really for me because I kind of got to a point with Louis Vuitton Where it would, I got stagnant with it like I kind of was like, you know what? I've just been buying mostly only Louis Vuitton bags for how many years now at this point point? And I wanted to branch out and experience other brands. I wanted to see how their bags felt, how they were, how they, you know, how they vibed with me. And it was quite apparent that really none of the other brands vibed with me. And the Louis Vuitton bags, um, that's just because I have, you know, been buying Louis Vuitton for so, so, so many years. I bought my first luxury handbag when I was 15 years old and it was a Louis Vuitton bag and then I had been buying them ever since. So those bags were sort of just, you know, found out didn't really work out for me. But the other brands, I just tried to give them a go and they didn't work out for me. And now I realize that Hermes is my brand. Hermes is the brand that sings to me. It makes my heart sing. It's the brand that I really love and appreciate their craftsmanship. There is just so much about that brand that really resonates with me. So now I have realized from all those bags that I bought before, um, they've helped me to find my style. They've helped me to really find what brand is for me when it comes to handbags. So now I've learned from that from that experience, you know, and it's not nice when you have to buy handbags and then you find out they don't work out for you and you feel like you're kind of repeating the process, you know, it doesn't feel good to just keep having to sell bags. You want to like go in with the best intentions that that's the bag that you're going to keep, but now I can be thankful for it. I can look back and go, you know what? I'm glad that I made all those mistakes. I'm glad that I bought those handbags and experienced them because now I realize what brand is for me, Hermes, of course, and I also realize what style of bag is for me you know but your lifestyle can change so your circumstances might change and you might actually need to change the kind of bags that you use so that's also a thing as well so it is also good to experience all these bags so you can go you know what if my lifestyle changes in the future and i need bags like this again you kind of have an idea of what not to buy and what perhaps to buy one thing I can say from this experience is if you have a, if you have bags in your collection or if you have a bag in your collection that you're hanging on to just because you're thinking, oh, I don't want to lose money on it. Um, I don't really like the bag, but I feel silly if I'm selling it. You know, I feel embarrassed, that sort of thing. Don't think like that because 
perhaps it was for a reason that you were supposed to experience that bag so you can find out what bags are for you going forward. Take it always as a lesson, you know, just yeah, take it as a lesson. That's all we can sort of do. We aren't, um, we aren't uh, mind readers. We can't, you know, know for sure what is exactly going to 100% be our forever bag. It takes time and, you know, experiencing other bags to really realize what's the right bags for us anyway, you know. Um, yeah, but that's it. That is all that I have for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.